You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a number of royal family members and officials. His Royal Highness affirmed that the aim of any organization is to guarantee the citizens ease of access to government services in the shortest time span with the highest quality in various fields. He asserted his support to all initiatives that facilitate work processes and accelerated steps. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Premier reviewed with the attendees a number of issues related to domestic affairs. He stressed the government's continuous efforts to support the development process so as to be able to provide an adequate line standard to the citizens. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also discussed with the attendees the rapid regional developments and the challenges they impose that call for a joint coordination and effective cooperation to deal with them. He urged for the preservation of security and stability as they constitute all aspects of life's development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace Al Ahli University's Board of Directors led by Farooq Yusuf Al Mu'ayyad, the founding president, chairman of the Board of Trustees of Al Ahli University, Professor Abdullah Yusuf Al Hawaj, the Board of Trustees and Committee of the Graduation Ceremony, in which they thanked His Royal Highness for his patronage of the 12th graduation ceremony held last week. His Royal Highness affirmed that investing in the education sector and developing it is Bahrain's priority and its march of development and modernization. The Prime Minister noted that education is essential to the development of societies expressing pride in Bahraini talents, His Royal Highness praised the role of Al-Ahliya University and its success in establishing the foundations of a leading educational edifice, wishing the university and its affiliates success. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness to facilitate investments in the education sector that ensures the quality of education according to the latest international systems in order to create generations capable of entering the labor market with the required qualifications. The Prime Minister called on all youth to arm themselves with knowledge that would enable them to carry out the responsibility of maintaining the safety and stability of the country. He also congratulated the graduates and wished them further success. His Royal Highness noted that the education sector is an important and supporting element to the government's efforts and plans to develop the sector with its potential to provide excellent educational services. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the advanced levels achieved by Bahraini educational institutions and regional and international events, which reflect the development of the education sector in Bahrain. His Royal Highness commended the role of the university in creating generations that recognize the value of loyalty to the nation and keen on adhering to Bahraini values. For his part, Professor Al Hawaj expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for annually patronizing the university's graduating ceremony. He added that His Royal Highness's support to the education sector is a motivation to work hard in providing advanced educational services in line with His Royal Highness's aspirations to equip Bahrainis with the finest skills and make Bahrain a prominent scientific center in the region. A poem was recited on His Royal Highness's role in supporting the education sector and his effort in the high position reached by Bahrain in various fields.
خليفة يا كبير القلب وهذه كلها البحرين تفرح بك خليفة يا شمس الخير يا الغالي خليفة تضوي في سماك يا رمز النور يا عزنا وفخرنا على القوة عساك أبو البحرين يا ريحة فرحنا كلنا نفتديك خليفة يا أمير الحب خليفة يا كبير القلب وهذه كلها البحرين تفرح بك خليفة وجودك دوم يا الغالي خليفة هو كل الأمان يا رمز الطيب والنخوة خليفة ويا عز المكان نعم يا محقق الأحلام فينا ويا تاج الوفا بك التاريخ يتغنى ويشهد ويتباهى الزمان خليفة يا أمير الحب خليفة يا كبير القلب وهذه كلها البحرين تفرح بك خليفة عساها دوم فرحتنا بحضورك بخير وسلام The work conference and exhibition of Tech No Disability was launched yesterday, which is being held under the patronage of the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and honorary president of the Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The conference is part of His Highness's humanitarian and scientific initiatives, which come in conjunction with the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. His Highness Sheikh Khalid highlighted that the Ministry of Labor and Social Development plays an important role by implementing plans and programs that aim at caring for people with disabilities. He added that this reflects the ministry's keenness to implement the government's directives which are in line with the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa that empowers disabled people to integrate them into society. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa participated alongside their Highnesses, the heads of delegations from the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa headed the Bahraini delegation in the opening session of the 38th session of the Supreme Council of the GCC, which is being headed by the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. At the beginning of the session, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah delivered a speech in which he welcomed the heads of delegations and thanked them for attending, which affirms their keenness to continue the blessed march of the GCC, stressing the importance of convening the summit amid the challenges facing the region. His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for heading the 37th GCC summit and his efforts to develop joint action in the council. His Highness praised the efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in achieving safety and stability in the region and a number of countries including Yemen and Syria. The Emir of Kuwait affirmed that Iran's action contradicts the international law. His Highness discussed during his speech a number of regional and international affairs of common concern. After that, the Secretary General of the GCC countries Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani delivered a speech in which he congratulated His Highness Emir of Kuwait for heading the current session. He expressed his aspiration for positive outcomes under the leadership of His Highness. He also expressed congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the achievements on the level of joint action during his chairmanship of the 37th session. Al Zayani affirmed that the summit reiterates the GCC leaders' keenness on developing the GCC system. He wished all success in the meeting. Their Highnesses and Excellencies will discuss the topics listed on the agenda of the summit. Earlier today, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa, arrived in Kuwait to head the Bahraini delegation at the 38th session of the Supreme Council of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC, which will commence today, this evening. At the forefront to receive Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak was the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, the Crown Prince of Kuwait, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, the Speaker of the Kuwaiti National Assembly, Marzouk Ali Al Ghalim, the Prime Minister of Kuwait, Sheikh Jabbar Al Barak Al Hamad Al Sabah, and a number of senior officials. Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa expressed pride in leading the delegation of the kingdom, he also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness the Emir of Kuwait for his invitation and his efforts which led to the convention of the 38th session. The Deputy Prime Minister affirmed that the participation of Bahrain reflects its keenness in maintaining the unity of the GCC countries in light of the common bonds and destiny that they share to protect the gains of the brotherly countries and their people. He expressed his wishes of success of the session, praising Kuwait's preparation, warm reception and hospitality. He added that the challenges and dangers that face the GCC countries necessitate working for the benefit of their people people to achieve their hopes and aspirations and to achieve integration among the member states. The mission of honor accompanying the Deputy Prime Minister was led by Kuwaiti Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs and Information Minister Sheikh Mohammed Al Abdullah Al Barak Al Sabah.
His role is the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized his advisor, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the 24th International Islamic Banking Conference. Over 1,300 leading figures and financial policy makers took part in the event, which is being held in Bahrain. The conference is considered one of the largest and oldest gatherings of leaders in the field of Islamic banking and finance in the world. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Premier to the participants and his wishes for the conference to develop Islamic banking and create new mechanisms that would contribute to the global financial system. He affirmed the government's keenness under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Premier on reinforcing the role of the banking sector as an important component of the economic system as well as consolidating the leading position of Islamic banks locally, regionally and globally as a result of the spread of its principles and innovative products that meet the requirements of the economic and investment movement. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa expressed the kingdom's pride in being one of the first countries that realized the huge growth potential of Islamic financing and has mobilized the potential to create a regulatory and legislative environment that has strengthened the competitive of Islamic banks. Bahrain became the host of the largest gathering of Islamic financial institutions in the region. He hailed the role of Islamic banks in developing the banking industry and promoting the kingdom as a leading financial and banking hub in the region, noting the government's efforts in providing a suitable environment for the development of the banking sector. The advisor of His Royal Highness the Premier praised the efforts of the conference's affiliates, affirming its importance as a platform that brings together leaders of banking industry to highlight the importance of Islamic finance and strengthening links of economic cooperation between countries, developing solutions to the challenges faced by this promising industry and exploring global opportunities for growth. The 24th edition of the International Islamic Banking Conference continues to add great value to critical issues in the global arena of Islamic banking, where given the economic uncertainties, the Islamic economy sector has displayed a strong appetite for diversification and adoption of evolving technology. Uh, very much committed to see this industry uh, takes its uh, right place uh, within the global industry. Uh, we are uh, very proud of the achievements, uh, the, the range of the products that are now in existence. Many of them are uh, the efforts uh, of the Central Bank of Bahrain working with the industry. We are continuously uh, looking for uh, ways to introduce new products, to improve on the quality of the regulations, and most importantly, to ensure the right uh, governance framework uh, in place for the industry to continue uh, in the future. The world's largest and most influential gathering of international Islamic banking and finance leaders focuses on transforming Islamic finance into a global proposition by facilitating strategic opportunities, addressing systematic challenges and connecting international market players and institutional investors to the industry's catalysts through leaders, partners and institutions. The challenge for banks right now is not to expand branches with brick and mortar as we did in the past. The challenge for banks right now is to identify what their end users want. Millennials and even old folks like me, they want service delivery done through the mobile phone. Quick, easy, accurate, anytime, anywhere. Blockchain represents the first digital medium for value and really represents nothing short of the second era of the internet. For 20 years we've had the internet of information, now we have the internet of value. It's a platform that allows us to move and store and manage assets, so stocks and bonds, titles and deeds, money, uh, in a way that's frictionless and peer-to-peer -peer and secure. And that's an innovation that's fundamentally new. Uh, we haven't had that really ever. We've always had to rely on centralized intermediaries to establish trust, and now we have a technology that does it for us. And that's going to have a bigger impact on the industry than just about any innovation in, in a decade or more. Global uh, fintech uh, investment products, blockchain, and there are investment uh, funds that can be provided to clientele base uh, that are internet-based and make um, uh, life easy for people to open the account and invest their money in a much faster way and very transparent and they can always have enough MIS in order to make further decisions for themselves. Along with the speeches, a press conference was held to announce the launch of the world's first fintech consortium of Islamic banks in Bahrain with a mandate to accelerate the build-out of innovative Sharia-compliant banking solutions. It's called Algo Bahrain and includes three of the industry's major players, Al Baraka Banking Group, Kuwait Finance House and Bahrain Development Bank. 
time we are not talking about the normal technology or new system. No, no, we are talking about a change, not in the banking, in our life, by new currency, digitals, by fintechs, all these kind of products or all these kind of things will give a full change to the both Islamic, non-Islamic banks and to our life. Satisfaction into our uh, client base because they can make uh, the business faster, they can, it will be much more transparent, they can see what's happening uh, with a click of a button. So all of these, they are fantastic products that are coming uh, uh, in this world of uh, fintech and we would like to capture them as soon as possible. I think uh, being a part of this also goes in line uh, with, with uh, Bahrain's intention to be uh, a fintech hub and with the, with the establishment of uh, Bahrain Fintech Bay. Uh, I think all those things uh, work together to achieving uh, a more uh, national goal. The ALGO era is set to revive the growth of the global Islamic banking industry through 15 fintech platforms in a cost-effective and accelerated way. Biggest minds in the Islamic banking and finance are all here today at the 24th World Islamic Banking Conference to discuss drivers of economic growth and risks. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ofor. The Arab Interparliamentary Union, the AIPU, has presented the Parliamentary Excellence Award for Heads of Councils to Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed Al Mullah. The award was given in recognition of Al Mullah's parliamentary contribution achievements and active role in regional and global parliamentary forums and the progress witnessed during his leadership of Bahrain Representatives Council. Al Mullah expressed appreciation of the brilliant award which he dedicated to His Majesty the King, leader of the Reform Project and Democratic March seen by the Kingdom of Bahrain. He stressed the achievement would further boost Bahrain's democratic and parliamentary standing at the Arab and global levels wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain more success to come. The Representative Council today held its weekly session under the chairmanship of the Council Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah. The Council approved the referral of a decree by law to the Shura Council on the ban and combating of money laundering and terrorism financing. The Council also approved an agreement between the governments of Bahrain and the United States to improve international tax compliance and the appliance of the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, the FATCA, and decided to refer the draft law to the Shura Council. The Council also approved the referred to the Shura Council a draft law approving an agreement between the governments of Bahrain and Tunisia on mutual administrative assistance for the prevention, investigation and repression of customs offences. The Representatives Council then discussed the report of the Public Utilities and Environment Affairs Committee on improving an air service agreement between the governments of Bahrain and Finland and decided to approve the draft law and referred it to the Shura Council. The Kingdom of Bahrain made a new educational achievement in its first participation in the Progress and in International Reading Literacy Study Test PIRLS 2016 in which the results were announced today. Bahraini girls students won first place with a score of 448 and 21 public and private schools managed to achieve a grade point average that exceeds the global average. On the occasion, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, stated that this achievement reflects the development of education in Bahrain with the support of its wise leadership. The test is conducted by the International Association for the Evaluation of educational achievements, the IEA, every five years to measure the basic language abilities and skills of fourth graders in their mother tongue. A joint national counter-terrorism drill, the Kingdom's Guards 1, will be held tonight at Sif Mal Manama after closing time. The exercise, which comprises forces from the Bahrain Defense Force, the Interior Ministry and the National Guard, is a field embodiment of strong ties and comprehensive military and security performance to safeguard national security and public safety. The Assistant Public Security Chief for Operations and Training Affairs Brigadier General, Hamad Mohamed Al-Khalifa, affirmed that training and joint drills are crucial for the development of security agencies in order to be able to combat terrorism and crime. Drills, it's, it's, uh, it's an important thing. It's a training. And training and training and training. It's must. Because when you train, you will fight terrorism once, but you have to train a thousand times of how to fight it. So, and uh, drills, it will also en en enhance our people to work together and to know uh, the limits of each forces and how to hand the, the situation uh, from each uh, other and how to, to, to multiply this. Working together, it's an important, uh, as we say, crime and terrorism, it's fast. If we don't 
work together, we will be uh, left behind. So we have to be ready, as we have been always ready. And uh, I think we are on the right track, and we are improving our cooperation and coordination together, and we are reaching our goals, which has been uh, worked together to, to, to reach uh, these goals. Meanwhile, National Guard's Colonel General Khaled Aramethi outlined the role of his security agency in reinforcing security and highlighted the training development the National Guard has witnessed since its establishment. Well, uh, Bahrain National Guard since established in 1997, uh, it have a huge step because of the direction of, uh, of His uh, Majesty, the King, our Supreme Commander, and the Chief, uh, our uh, Commander, uh, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa. Uh, under the patronage of uh, Chief of Staff Sheikh Abdul Aziz, uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa, the Chief of Staff of, of National Guard, in these 20 years, uh, we have uh, you know we have a huge uh, step in training, in equipment, in uh, maintaining uh, the soldier morale. Then we have a different rules in Bahrain according to the direction coming from the headquarter and uh, I think from my, my, my point of view uh, I want, I'm one of the Bahrain National Guard but you know according to what we, le what we learn or listen uh, from the others I mean different organizations not just in Bahrain uh, their opinion about uh, the Bah uh, Bahrain National Guard soldiers and the, how they are uh, effective and uh, I mean doing their mission well. CEO of Real Estate Regulatory Authority Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa signed a cooperation agreement worth 1 million and 200,000 Bahraini dinars annually with Executive Director of International Development of Ireland Company Ted Bowie. The main objective of the appointment of the consulting firm is to establish and operate the Real Estate Regulatory Authority for a period of three years, including drafting legal tools and regulations to implement the law, establishing the organizational structure and job description of the institution. The agreement covers development in seven main areas legal, regulatory, strategic, financial, technical, operational, and media. It also includes the preparation of a national strategic plan to promote the real estate sector. We have done that gap analysis in Bahrain and we worked really hard to have a, a sustainable, robust, transparent regulatory authority to help the real estate sector uh, boost and secure the real estate sector from um, the defaults that we had occur in the past. And we worked in, in establishing a law which is, uh, came out in August of this year and uh, the real estate sector was going to uh, benefit out of that uh, by establishing uh, RERA by uh, March of 2018 and we're going to uh, write the bylaws by then and uh, the board of directors will be established and meeting uh, for the upcoming uh, year and for the years to come as well. So um, the mandatory requirement of RERA is to secure and have a vision and a mission to, to enhance the real estate sector. A number of different levels of uh, objectives here. Number one is the establishment of RERA itself and its internal organization and structure. And the second part of it really is to do with increasing uh, the capability and professionalism of the participants in the marketplace and thus building confidence in investing an economic activity for the benefit of all in Bahrain. So if you take, first of all, the organization itself, you're looking at HR, IT, uh, a, a myriad of, of different divisions within the organization to start specifying the requirements there, the systems and the procedures. So you think about skills transfer. We will have people on the ground here permanently. Therefore, they will work with counterparts to skills transfer. And if you take it then outside the organization and you look at the participants in the market, you are uh, looking at building their professionalism, uh, talking about capacity building and professionalization. Nancy Khadouri is a prominent figure in Bahrain for many reasons. Not only is she a member of the Shura Council for the third legislative term and a member of the Coordination Council for Women Empowerment at the Supreme Council for Women, she is also the author of From Our Beginning to Present Day, a book detailing the history, culture and traditions of Bahraini Jews. More on this report with Shoghan Mohammed. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain has always looked after the welfare of its citizens, regardless of their religion or beliefs. And this is shown by the appointment of people of different faiths in positions of power by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Her Excellency Nancy Kuduri is an example of this as a Jewish member of the Shura Council. Of course, uh, our lives in Bahrain uh, is blessed because we are enriched to be living in a country that respects religious freedom. Uh, one of the most urgent uh, global issues that needs to be addressed today is the fostering of understanding between people of different faiths. Uh, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, uh, no doubt we have a leading example. We have uh, various faiths uh, here. Uh, the Jewish community of Bahrain uh, established themselves way back since 1873 and 1880s, uh, originating from Iraq and some from India. And uh, they came in, so in search of a better way of life. And of course, we have uh, one of the first uh, countries in the Gulf was Bahrain to have a Jewish synagogue. Under the wise leadership of His Majesty, the kingdom continues the process of reforms and modernization across various sectors. Well, the reform process uh, is of great significance for the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, in general, we have seen uh, plenty of uh, uh, social institutions being set up uh, for the betterment on the welfare of the welfare of the citizens, uh, and that, in effect, will have a great effect uh, on the impact that the citizens offer towards the development of our society. Uh, we've had a lot of institutions, a lot of awards, uh, global awards set up uh, to encourage um, openness and to encourage uh, citizens in various fields, uh, youth, women empowerment, etc. The launch of the Kingdom of Bahrain's declaration in Los Angeles in September only further indicates Bahrain's standing as a hub for religious peace and coexistence. His Majesty's vision is to create religious and cultural dialogue to end conflicts and achieve reconciliation and peace. On the subject matter of the Bahrain Declaration, I feel it's very important to bring about awareness uh, to those who may uh, not have been able to read uh, about it and to understand what exactly uh, the, the contents of this declaration contains. Uh, I would like to share today. Uh, it begins, of course, with uh, a quotation uh, by His Majesty uh, King Hamad, and it also concludes with a quotation, uh, which I will um, read. Uh, it begins begins with ignorance is the enemy of peace. It is, therefore, our duty to learn, to share, and to live together by the tenets of faith in the spirit of mutual respect and love. It concludes, faith illuminates our path to peace. The Kingdom of Bahrain is truly a pioneer in the Gulf for religious freedom, and through the efforts of His Majesty the King, Bahrain only continues to further progress and develop in the aspect of religious freedom. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed.